Yeah, I, I was just wondering, you know, on the, on the plane ride home from uh, New York, did you get any nice text messages from, from family or, you know, about that interception to, for you guys to continue, you know, that NFL long streak you guys have with the takeaways? Uh, yeah, my mom, my dad, some of my, my good friends text me, said they saw the, saw the interception, so that was cool. But, um, no, that was definitely a big play in the game for me. Awesome. Yeah, Nick, in the, you know, the past two seasons, you've transformed yourself into being a reliable piece, uh, you know, in that nickel cornerback role. Um, you know, what can you just say, if you could recap the past two seasons for yourself, how they've gone for you and um, how happy you are with the success you've been having? Uh, definitely first year, um, started off a little shaky, had to adjust. Um, but I think throughout the first year, just growing, learning, adapting to the NFL season, um, coaching wise, I think that helped a little bit. And then them just letting me know what I needed to do in the off season to really take that big jump in the second year. I think that helped a lot. And then coach GA has done a really good job um, coaching me the, the, the tiny fundamentals in the slot. I didn't know it was that detailed. So he's been a big help in uh, helping me just continue to improve my game week by week. No. Yeah, Nick, I agree. Um, we like talking to GA because he has a, a way of explaining things that make it make it more understandable you know what I'm saying right I'm actually writing a story about Raekwon Davis we talked a little while ago and obviously he's just a rook mm -hmm. what's your impression of uh, of what he does well uh yeah well my first impression when I first saw him I was definitely like this is the biggest dude I ever seen like, and it's crazy because he's just a rookie and you think he's gonna have a deep voice to kind of got the little light voice all happy funny but uh yeah when he stepped on there the first day of pass and training camp you could tell why they brought him here he's a beast like dominates the middle of the field uh he still got yeah we're all still learning but he's definitely improving every week and uh it's definitely up for the challenge and i respect that for sure for taking the coaching nick uh i want to ask you about you now that you're a little bit more comfortable playing that nickel role i'm doing something on the slot position or or space or area of the field which is how flores views it What's the challenge of when you're playing that inside between the hash area and, and all these little, you know, scat back receivers are running option routes on you? Yeah, like, well, yeah, that's another, that's a great example right there. They got option routes, um, definitely in the slot too. They got a two-way go field open on both sides. So um, just knowing where your help is and how you can play to your leverage. And uh, really it comes down to uh, film study too, knowing what, what routes they like to run in the slot. Cause it's a, it's a real different route tree than the outside. So. I've been trying to learn all that stuff and, like I said, study some guys that have been successful in the slot. Al? Hi, Nick. Um, I want to ask you about Josh Baker. Uh, what's it like? What's his, his coaching style like when he deals with you guys? And then what's his, what, how do you describe his coaching style in terms of the way he calls a game on game days? Um, I would say – they're both the same. He's aggressive. Um, he's very attention to detail, just how he wants our defense, um, all our checks. Uh, we got to make sure everybody knows him. Everybody's on point. So he's just, he, he's big on detail. He'll stay on your ass. He pushes you to be the best player you could be, which I like always, every day. He's never letting up. And I think that's what translates into the game and, and creating that like relentless effort that we all try to play with. Alan. Good afternoon, Nick. Uh, Nick, second year in a row. Good, after, good afternoon. Second year in a row, you guys are facing the Bengals. At this time last year, it was a battle to see who would get, who might get like the first overall pick. A year later, Bengals are still struggling. You guys are in the thick of a playoff race. So, what goes through your mind when you contemplate how far you guys have come at that time last year? Uh, just the work that we put in during last year in the off season. It's all coming to light. Um, Coach Blow says come in every week grinding, trying to get 1% better every day. And I think we've just really been doing that and uh, success has shown. We still got a lot more work to do. And this is a big game this week. Got to come out and execute. Hey, Nick, I had a chance to catch up with uh, Sam McGuavin earlier. And he was telling me about the last airbender and street fighter he's going to have on his cleats for this weekend's game for My Cause, My Cleats. I asked him if Christian Wilkins is going to come and maybe try to get his hands on those. I was curious what you're wearing, uh, what what's going to be on the cleats, what the cause is. Okay. Anybody's knocking down your door to get their hands on your, your shoes for the weekend. Yeah, no, nah, mine is, uh, it was Alan Hearns. I did his last year too, the 88 Blessings, um, Single Mothers. Um, 
and mine uh, is red and pink just for like love i guess and then got some hearts on there and then my mom's name so just going to be out there representing her but we'll yeah. take two more omar Nick, well, I know this isn't your position, but since you study these guys, what makes a good slot receiver? Um, just like I said, no, playing to my leverage receivers, knowing the leverage of a DB, knowing how to attack different leverages. Um, man, quickness, quickness definitely helps a lot. Speed, speed kills. Um, but yeah, just knowing how to, uh, where they are on the field, how they move around, having good ball security. And uh, yeah, that's really it makes it real tough on the guard. The last one, Safin. Nick, I'm a, I'm a mama's boy too, man. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about your mom and, and how much she means to you? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm mom and dad too, but uh, <laughs> just live with my mom for a little longer. Uh, she means the world to me. Uh, she grinds every day. She's very, <laughs> very protective of me. It's funny, but uh, no, nah, I love her. She she pushes me every day. That's why I go out there and play for her. My dad too, it's just grinding. Whenever I make a play or see the smile on their face, that makes me happy. Makes me want me makes me want to keep going for sure. Hey, Raekwon, how's it going, man? How's it going? Good, good. Um, Brett tweeted a stat uh this morning about your your total tackles in November that it was one of the most um of of all linemen. I just what what have the past few weeks been like for you in, in terms of uh, your production? And it seems like you're you're you know being a difference maker out there when you're on the field. Um, just a, a better preparation, you know. I'm just just trying to focus on helping the defense and just trying to do what I can do. Stopping. Raekwon, I mean this question in the nicest way possible. How did you get so big? Like, who, what did you eat? Who did you eat? Are there anybody that was like really tall in your family growing up? Uh, how did you, uh, how did this size come about, man? Um, I think I, well, it came from my dad's side of the family. My dad's side of the family kind of, like, well, his brother, his dad, and his, um, his uncles and stuff, it was real big. So I got my height from my dad's side of the family. Joe? Hey, Raekwon, I've been to a lot of places, but I've never been to Meridian, Mississippi. That is your hometown, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Can you tell me about it? Um, uh, I don't know what kind of stuff people in Meridian do. Do you guys do? I, I heard that some people do noodling, which is where you catch fish with your hands. Tell me about some of the things that you guys uh, did growing up in Mississippi. Um, it's, a, it's a small town. Um, a lot of poverty, I can tell you that. I don't know about the, the the fishing part or whatever you just said, but but no, nah, it's a it's a nice small town, man. We're good people. All right, we'll go to Barry. Hi, Raekwon. There's this uh, national website that rates how you've played the last three weeks really, really high. Have the grades from Coach Hobby been really high, and are you really happy with how you've played these last three weeks? Uh, I'm just focused on like. The the outside, like online grading and, and all that, I just I let my coaches just, just come back with the feedback and just tell me what I I basically need to get good at and um, what I need to do better and uh, and how how I need to do it. But no, I don't really pay attention to the grade, you know, not right now, no way. So, yo, yeah. hey, just to clarify that um, fishing thing, so it's called noodling, and I guess. Noodle in the Mississippi River, you catch uh, a catfish with your hand. I would never do it. It seems kind of scary and dangerous. But anyway, if it ever comes up, it's called noodling. But uh, yeah. following, following, <laughs> following, up on, never did. following up on, uh, on, on someone mentioned Coach Hobby, what is something that he has, uh, you know, said to you or pointed out or stressed that you have actually, you know, connected with and found to be quite helpful? Um, I mean, like when I first, like the first beginning of the season, you know, um, I was kind of like struggling with the uh, with pass rushing and reading games, reading, like reading the fundamental part. And um, actually right now, I'm just, I'm starting to make plays off of it. Now I just got to just go out there and make more plays, basically. Wow. 
Raekwon, you just mentioned uh, at the beginning of the year, you were kind of struggling. What was your mindset at that point? Did you have any doubts? Did that start to come into mind or did you know that it was going to come around for you? No, I just know I just, just keep working, you know? I mean, I got time. As you see, I still got, I still got more time, but I mean, it's just something that naturally going to come. And I felt like at the beginning of the season, I felt like I was just trying to, you know, trying to chase it and make it happen on my own without just, just naturally just playing. Barry? Raekwon, with, with your gifts from a physical standpoint, uh, you know, some would say you have potential to be more than just a starting NFL defensive tackle. Does the idea of eventually being a Pro Bowl type talent and player drive you at all? Hell yeah. This, I mean, that's my goal. That's, that's something I want to accomplish. All right, we got one more. We'll try Omar one more time. You there, Omar? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask you, who is the biggest person in your family, or is that you? That's me. Hey, Jesse. Good to see you, man. Got my Mariners hat on for you today. Uh, hey, so, right. you got my cause, my cleats this weekend. I was curious what you're going to be rocking on your feet for for the uh, weekend's game. Yeah, yeah. I did uh, Team Never Quit. It's Marcus Luttrell's foundation. Uh, pretty cool thing. Barry? Hi, Jesse. Uh, any advice you've given the three rookies on just making it through a season that's obviously longer than college ball? How do you see their, their energy level? Obviously, Solomon's been dealing with a foot injury, but physically, how are the rigors of their longest football season going, do you think? Yeah, you know, they're doing good. Uh, obviously, injuries, you know, don't really help. But, um, you know, I just tell them one game at a time. You know, you can't really look, look ahead, can't really dwell on the past. I mean, his goal is to stay healthy and uh, keep going. Omar? Jesse, awesome mustache. It's interesting. <laughs> um, Thanks. Uh, question for you. The transition now, I guess, back to right guard. Is it more like riding a bike or is it – uh, how difficult is it to the challenges of, of that position as opposed to tackle? Yeah, you know, it's just kind of, you know, it, I have, you know, obviously played there, so it's not something new, but um, just retraining my eyes and retraining my footwork and, you know, obviously working in a tighter space. And, uh, you know, it just takes time to get, get it down. But, um, you know, I look forward to the challenge and, you know, wherever this team needs me, that's where I'll be. Joe? Hey there, Jesse. Uh, I think later today or tomorrow, we might be talking to uh, Raekwon Davis. And I know he plays on the inside. And so I don't know how many, you know, practice reps you've had against him since his arrival, but just in general, what do, what do you view uh, his, you know, his strength? Yeah, he's good. You know, he's, he's a big, big guys, uh, you know, long, tall, good, good leverage, uh, good motor, you know, he's, He's tough to deal with, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, the way he's going, I think he's having a pretty good year. And uh, so overall, he's just, you know, strength is probably his, uh, his biggest factor that he brings. Omar? Jesse, I wanted to ask you about the, the run run game issues. I you know you – I'm sure you're aware that you guys have ranked last in the league in yards per attempt most of the season. Uh, last week, you guys had a successful four-minute drive where you killed all six minutes of the clock. What was different about that drive that's maybe something that you guys can bottle and, and carry over the final five games? Um, yeah, I think we just kind of made our adjustments kind of later than what we should have done. But um, I think, you know, we just got to be more physical. We just got to, you know, stick to double teams. We got to uh, be able to move the line of scrimmage. And that's, a, you know, the biggest issue we were having. And, you know, lately everybody's been moving on us and bringing somebody extra. So it's a little bit of communication issues, I think, than, than most things. But just got to be more physical than them. Barry? Kind of to build off something Omar asked you a little while ago. Steve Marshall was asked this week why Jesse at guard, Rob Hunt at tackle, as opposed to reverse. And he cited your experience, obviously, playing there. Is that something that the three of you guys have talked about collectively 
uh, through, or is it just something where Steve has said, this is how we're going to do it. We're not really, you know, feeling a need to discuss it at this point. Yeah, I don't, we haven't really talked about it and, you know, it's more upstairs than anything. And, you know, wherever they're going to tell us to play, that's where we'll be. But I mean, it makes sense, you know, wants to keep somebody with the communication base, you know, especially for these rookies trying to get them understanding things, but, um, you know, they're smart enough too. you know, they know the game plan, they know what to do. So, um, a question for them josh yeah jesse uh, just to go back to the the raekwon um question when when a guy is that big as a rookie and you know with his body size you mentioned physicality as an offensive lineman um could you just add a little bit more about the competitiveness that he brings just knowing i mean he brings that physical stature there at the line yeah you, you know whenever you get a guy that big um it's hard to move, you know, it's hard to get leverage, uh, you know, obviously low man wins, but he also comes off the ball pretty fast. He's got the physicality of the nature of the game. So uh, for him, it's, you know, he's been just getting his feet in the ground. That's the main key how to get an offense lineman out of their, out of their uh, block, but uh, he's a good player. All right, we got time for two more, Omar. Uh, you talked about being in closed quarters or working in closed quarters. Sorry about the drilling. Um, what's different about that as opposed to tackle and what, what challenges does that present? I know you're facing more of a 300 pound guy as opposed to maybe a 260 guy. Yeah. Um, just getting your feet in the ground, uh, in close quarters, it's not, you got, you know, on tackle, you're kind of used to like long movements versus inside. You're used to those short movements. So, uh, not stepping on your center or your tackle is uh, the key, but, uh, you know, just fighting in a phone booth kind of, and it's, you know, it brings us challenges, but it's also, you can, you know, lock up pretty fast. So. All right. Last one, Safa. Hey, Jesse, I imagine a phone booth with booth would be pretty crowded for you. Um, uh, Steve Marshall, the last two times we talked to them, to him, he mentioned you being the, the MVP of the O-line um, and probably the most important player because of your versatility. Just what, you know, what does that compliment mean to you from, from him? Yeah, you know, it's nice to hear, um, you know, I, I do work hard at this position, try to balance it all and, you know, cross train, whatever they want to call it. But, uh, you know, I just want to be on the field and, and you know, the, the fastest way off the field is, you know, tell somebody, no, they're going to play the position. But, um, you know, I enjoy the challenges that it brings. Um, sometimes it's tough, but, you know, it's it's also good to, you know, keep it all on, on the line, you know, playing left to right and right to left and uh, hopefully you know, keep a future here. Hey, Clayton, how's it going, man? Good to see you. I had a question for you about uh, special teams coach Danny Cross. I, I spoke to, to Blake Fergus and McGuavin, and they both joked about the frequency of getting chewed out by coach. I was curious just to get your take on his personality, whether it's in meetings and the, on the practice field on game day, just what does coach Crossman bring to, to the facility every day? Well, he just, he just uh, demands that, you, you know, your, you, you know, your assignment. So, I mean, you're only getting chewed out if, uh, you know, if you're not going through all this scouting report to the fine tooth comb. But, uh, you know, he he, uh, he holds the players to a standard. Um, the guys on this team hold each other to a standard. And uh, that's why we're executing the way we are right now. You guys want to go ahead and click the raise your hand button? Do you have any questions? Omar? Hey, Clayton, I, I know this isn't specifically your role, but I'm sure you've probably played a, a gunner role a, 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 at some point in your special teams career. What what does it entail to be a gunner? What do you have to go through? To be a gunner? Um, yeah. I think a, a couple reps in practice here and there. Um, don't have uh, any under my belt, no rep under my belt in uh, live games. But um, to be a gunner, you have to – you have to be able to execute in space. You got to beat your one on ones if they're uh, if they're doubling you and bison. I mean, it just it's a demanding position. Uh, position, you know, when they when they have an eight man box on their punt return unit and you're out single, you have to win because everyone else on that unit is protecting first before we can help out and cover. So, I mean, it's a uh, it's definitely a skill position. Your your better athletes, your quicker guys are out there. Not only do you have to win off the line, but once once you get down there, you have to win at the point of attack and get some of the best athletes, the punt returners on the ground. So it's a, like you said, it is a demanding 
commanding position. Alan? Hi, Clayton. Um, so I have a two-part question. I wanted to get your thoughts on facing your former team. And also, since I'm assuming you have guys that you still have good relationships with over there, uh, how closely you, you keep tabs on what's going on with them and what you make of their season. Yeah, I, uh, I, I still talk to a handful of the guys over there. Um, haven't been doing much talking this week. Uh, you, know, you got to keep everything in house, but it's, you know, they, they have a good unit over there. Uh, Darren Simmons, he's a, he's a good coach. They're going to come out and they're going to have a, a good game plan. Um, but yeah, I mean, they got, they got guys like, you know, I, I talked to Brandon Wilson. You saw last week he had a 103 yard kick, uh, kickoff return. So we, you know, we, they, they have good players and we're going to have to execute, but uh, we're definitely excited for the challenge. Travis. Hey Clayton, this weekend is uh, my cause, my cleats. I was just curious what you're wearing and, and what the cause is for you. If, if you are wearing them. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be wearing Pat Tillman's uh, foundation. Um, you know, I just, I, a lot of people know the story, unfortunately with what happened to him overseas, but I just, I'm, I'm a big advocate for our military. I support our military and I, I love what the foundation does and what they bring for opportunities and scholarships and just the military families, and military background, so they can continue to grow and, and empower themselves and society. So I've just, I, I love the, the Pat Tillman foundation. I'll be representing them and uh, that's what I'll be rocking. 